Thank you all for, I, I think most of the faces that I see now were also here at the breakfast this morning. So thank you for participating in all parts of Diversity Day today. And um, we have a very special uh, presentation, in fact, a couple of presentations uh, this afternoon. Uh, we're going to focus on the, uh, the G of geographical diversity and very specifically on the upcoming GLEC taking place at the end of April in Morocco. I am personally just really so disappointed that I cannot uh, attend that GLEC. I've been to Morocco only once and it was one of the most fascinating, fascinating countries I've, I've ever visited. And look in, look in my living room and you'll see why I think it's so fascinating with rugs and all of that. Um, so we are very delighted uh, that two of the three uh, GLEC uh, co-chairs are here with us today. Uh, one, of course, is my colleague on the Bureau, uh, Val Munsani, who is the CEO of the South African National Space Agency. And um, as I mentioned, also an IAF Vice President for Developing Countries and Emerging Nations. And we also have with us uh, Jean-Pascal Lefranc, who is the Director of Planning, International Relations and Quality for CNES here in, in Paris. Lucky you. <laughs> um, I'll also mention uh, that the third IPC co-chair, who I'm pretty sure is not with us today, uh, Dr. Hadani, who is the director of the Royal Center for Remote Sensing in Morocco and just simply could not be here. So, um, Dr. Uh, Mr. Massani, if I could call you to the floor for the presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mary, for the introduction. And just to acknowledge my co-conspirator, Jean Pascal. And as Mary had indicated, my, uh, the other co-chair is not here. He's back in Morocco. So I'm here to talk about the GLEC 2019, uh, which is the Global Conference uh, on Space for Emerging Countries. So why GLEC 2019? And I just want to put the context in place before I talk about the arrangements for the conference itself. So if you lift the lid on the global innovation agenda that was introduced by the current IAF president, you'll find there's seven key objectives. And the first two objectives on the top of the list is reaching out to emerging countries and connect with new communities. And then the second one is around fostering the principles of 3G diversity within the Federation and the space sector. And 3G is obviously uh, the geography, the gender, and the... Um, generation, okay? And so the Global Conference on Space for Emerging Countries essentially speaks to those two uh, objectives of the global innovation agenda. So the purpose as well from drawing down from the global innovation agenda, we've set up a working group, particularly focusing on developing countries and emerging nations. And the purpose of this working group is threefold. One is to ensure that we involve a stronger participation of emerging countries in IAF activities. So if you look around, there's many emerging countries that are popping up that have an interest in space uh, activities. And so we wanted to see how we draw them into the IAF um, membership uh, fold. The second is that apart from bringing in the emerging countries into the IAF experience, is also to see how we provide support, both from the knowledge and expertise and then also produce the benefits to these countries in terms of what is the value proposition of space for these emerging countries. And so the problem statement that we are currently working on as the working group and obviously touching on the GLEC 2019 is how do we attract the many new entrants that are breaking through as emerging nations? The second one is uh, how does the IAF engage and attract these countries? And how does the IAF support these countries in addressing specific challenges that uh, they may face? Okay. 
Um, so it's not just about bringing the emerging countries into the IAF membership, but also to see how the IAF supports the emerging countries. Uh, so it's a dual sort of relationship. And central to that relationship is obviously understanding the value proposition on both sides of the fence, what the uh, emerging countries can extract from being an IAF member and what the IAF itself can offer to emerging countries. But in order to do that, I think what's important in this conversation is to understand, so what are the challenges that emerging countries are currently facing? And first and foremost, if you're setting up a new space program as an emerging nation, the political support or the lack of it is probably one of the biggest stumbling blocks. And so how do you navigate around getting the right political support? So that's the first challenge. The second is obviously the financial resourcing. Given the many competing priorities amongst the emerging nations, space is not necessarily seen as top of the agenda. And even if you do set up a space uh, program, it's not necessarily well resourced. The second or the third one is the technology maturity levels. And given that you're just starting out as a nascent space program, the technology maturity levels is not necessarily in place. And so you need to build that up. And in concert with that is the human capital, the warm bodies, the experts that you need on the ground to give effect to the national space programs. And then the last one, and by no means the, the least important, is infrastructure. So if you want to engage in an effective space program, you need the necessary infrastructure that speaks to the implementation of the program. And so where does the IAF network comes in play? If you had to crack the political support and the common experience and the collective experience in the room is we understand the socioeconomic benefits of space. So how do we codify some of that and present that to the emerging countries, especially to the political uh, principles? The second is if you have a, a constrained financial resources, what are the informed choices that you can make in order to best utilize that resource? And how does the IAF provide that kind of experience and expertise? The third is on the technology maturity. And can we look at technology transfer arrangements? And I think there's quite a few of those programs that are kind of floating around. And can we leverage some of that for the emerging countries? And then likewise for human capital, uh, how do we ensure that there's knowledge and skills transfer uh, from developed to developing nations? And then the last one is in the infrastructure, which is the and I think the way to go around this is the co-development of infrastructure. And this is particularly important, and just to give you the latest experience with regards to Africa, you might have heard that um, the African Union heads of state have approved that Egypt hosts the African Space Agency for the African Union. But if you interrogate the policy, what the policy says is that the African Space Agency is not going to duplicate or reestablish infrastructure. So if, for example, if you have an assembly integration and testing facility that sits in, let's say, Nigeria and South Africa, you're not going to go and build a new infrastructure. How do you leverage on what's already in Africa for Africa? So the co-development uh, of the infrastructure is going to become quite important in this new sort of arrangement as to how we work together as a region as well. So I thought it was important just to put the context in place as to why GLEC 2019 is important for the IAF and how emerging countries can leverage of the IAF network and membership. So what we've got here is just the GLEC 2019 at a glance. So it's a three-day conference. So if you look at the first day as an opening ceremony, and then we have two very key uh, high-level keynote speakers, which I'll come to just now. And then we have six plenary sessions. The first two plenary sessions is on day one. And then we end off with a welcome reception by the IAF Secretariat. And then the second day, we'll see plenaries three and four. And then we have a seminar on the next generation's view on space for emerging countries. And we've got our colleagues in the back, uh, Mino and Clementine, who follow up with a presentation on SGAC uh, for Marrakesh. And then the last day concludes with plenaries five and six. And then we reconvene um, with all the moderators presenting the outcomes of the various plenaries in the last session before we hit the closing ceremony. So that's the week in the glance. And the current registration status, we've got 139 uh, registered already. And I'm not going to go through the statistics. Um, but 
I think there's some work. There's an, a GLEC IPC uh, committee meeting this afternoon, and I think for me, it's practically this column here is the, uh, the number of emerging countries that have registered. And given that the focus is on emerging countries, we need to look at that very seriously. So if you go through the program for the week, there's the opening ceremony. I'm not going to talk about in detail to each one of them. But there's a high-level keynote by uh, Dr. Mahama Odrago, who's the African Union representative. He's actually now the director for Human Resources Science and Technology. And he's been instrumental in the development of the African Space Policy, the strategy, the establishment of the African Space Agency. So it'll be quite useful to hear from him uh, the views on Africa. And then there's a second high-level keynote address by Ahmad Belhaw Al-Fasi, Falasi, who is the chair of the UAE Space Agency and also the Minister of State for Higher Education and Advanced Skills. So those are the two high-level keynote addresses. And then we add into the plenary sessions itself. So plenary one is looking at the socioeconomic benefits or the benefits of space applications. And given the focus or the sub-focus, we've segmented it into two parts. The first part is looking at it from a space agency perspective. And this primarily comprises of representatives of space agencies. And the keynote address will be given by Driss El Hadani, who is the director of CRTS in Morocco. And the moderator is Jean Pascal uh, from CNES. The second part of the plenary one, again, still focusing on the benefits of space applications. Uh, the keynote will be done by Charles Bolden, the former uh, administrator of NASA. But he'll be joining us via, I think, Skype. Uh, he's not going to be there physically. But we've organized that he will address us through Skype. And then we've also included the high-level panel. But this particular focus is on the industry side. What is the value proposition? from the industry uh, perspective in terms of the benefits of space applications. And I will moderate that session. Then there is plenary two, which is looking at financial models and resourcing. And the keynote is, uh, will be done by Steve Bochinger from Euroconsult. And I've just put down the, um, um, the panel of experts. And the moderator is Kirsten Armstrong. And then uh, plenary three. Uh, we'll have a keynote addressed by Jean de Dal Dalmau, who is the current president of the International Space University. And the focus here is on technology and skills development. And the university perspective is going to be key to that. Um, and then I've put down the experts uh, that will be uh, sitting in the panel and answering the questions. And then the moderator is Rania Tokebri. And we just in ensured that uh, we, we had gender par parity and also youth representation. So the moderator is from the SGAC, thanks to the SGAC. Okay. And then plenary four, it will be, the keynote will be Pilar Zamaro. Um, she's the executive director and founder of the Colombian Space Agency. And the moderator will be um, uh, Crystal Wilson. And the focus here is on the base infrastructure requirements for emerging countries. And keynote five is on the space industry development and support. Um, <laughs> And the keynote will be Pascal Aaron Freit uh, from DLR. Are you looking very puzzled, Pascal? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, and those are the uh, experts that will sit in the panel. And the moderator will be Cami Brun, who is the head of global business at China Head Aerospace. And then the last plenary is on legal and policy. And I think this is probably the most important or not most important, but the central issue, the departure point for emerging countries is how do you set up the legal and policy instruments that give effect to national space programs? Okay. And the keynote will be Igmar Marbo, who is a professor of international law at the University of Vienna in Austria, and that's the panel. And the moderator is David Kendall, who is the former chair of the UN Copius, and he's based in Canada. And as I indicated, all of these plenary sessions will sort of converge into the results and recommendation session where we'll call the moderators uh, up and they'll each give a, a roundup of the sessions themselves. Okay? And then there'll be a closing ceremony which will involve the IAF um, VPs and the uh, principals from Morocco. And then 
there's also been a request from the sponsors to exhibit, and I think the IEF has responded by providing an exhibition space. And so there's eight stands uh, as currently reflected. And then the sponsors, the gold sponsor is the UAE Space Agency and DFH Satellite Company. And the silver sponsor is Airbus and Azure Cosmos. So I'd just like to thank the sponsors as well for making this possible. Okay. And that's my presentation. Thank you. Chris John has promised that next year we're going to be upgraded to having railings up here, so I won't be asking for a hand. Um, thank you very much for that extremely interesting presentation, and I hope that many in this room will be going to Marrakesh um, next month. Uh, so in, in the framework of GLEC uh, 2019, as you've already heard there's going to be a half-day seminar on uh, the next generation's view, perspective on uh, space for emerging countries. And this is being organized, of course, um, in cooperation with SGAC. So I would now like to uh, call on stage um, the Vice President for Education and Workforce Development and also the SGAC Executive Director to present the details of the seminar. So, Manu and Clementine. Please come up. Don't be afraid. I'm just putting up another slide. If you don't have slides. Thank you. So thank you very much. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Clementine. I am the Executive Director for the Space Generation Advisory Council, or SGAC. Um, as uh, Dr. Monsabi mentioned and, and Mary, um, we are very honored to, to partner with the IEF for the GLEC 2019. Last year, we had the chance to uh, also organize a, a seminar in uh, Montevideo. It was a great success, so we're looking forward to do it again. Um, so yeah, it's my great pleasure to announce this seminar. It's uh, meant to share the views of the next generation on space for emerging countries. This is going to be a half-day event that will be held in conjunction uh, with the GLEC on the 25th. And it's co-organized with the um, IEF. The aim of the event is really to, to engage with the, the, the Moroccan and the African students and young professionals, as well as, as, well as all the students from um, space uh, emerging countries. And this is to provide an opportunity for capacity building, as well as uh, get their policy input on space applications. So there will be uh, three keynote addresses, one special guest, which is also um, the former administrator of NASA, Charlie Bolden, which will join us on Skype as well as five working group discussions on different topics regarding space applications, including, for instance, um, IoT um, and also space for disaster management, and a short panel discussions where we will really have the opportunity to interact uh, with the different speakers. The organizing team uh, is constituted of uh, all SGAC members who are um, from Morocco, from Tunisia, from Nigeria, also the RC for Africa is participating. So it's really um, a local group of uh, students and young professionals who decided to put this program together. They did a fantastic job. We are honored to have some of the speakers uh, to this seminar with us uh, today. So I would like to personally thank you for your participation. The outcome of this event uh, will also be presented on the 26th by the, the moderator of uh, the seminar in front of the whole um, GLEC 2019 audience. So we really look forward to this exciting event. Uh, we would like to thank very much the IF, DUCNES, and the CRTS for this opportunity. And without further ado, I let Minu uh, speak.
So good afternoon, everyone. Just a few closing words from my side. Uh, on behalf of the IEF, I want to say that we really value the opportunity to partner with the Space Generation Advisory Council to engage the next generation of young professionals in this very timely and important conference. The IEF, as many of you know, have a long history of initiatives that engage, engage both students and young professionals. This is everything from the Emerging Space Leader and Young Space Leader grant program. It's also the dedicated committees and technical sessions that both help support and engage the next generation of space professionals as they grow and establish their careers in the industry. Now, the focus of Emerging Space Nations also sheds light on very important topics and really brings to light some of the key missions of the IF. This includes promoting cooperation, sharing knowledge, as well as preparing the workforce for tomorrow. And as industry continues to expand and new market opportunities open and there's increased globalization, there's a demand for the next generation of young professionals to join the sector through these professional events. And, you know, especially uh, enabling platforms for the next gen to voice their opinions and perspectives. So we look forward to the outcomes of these discussions and we hope to report them to you in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Manu and Clementine. That actually is going to bring us to the close of our of our uh, lunch, our three idea diversity lunch, and uh, to officially uh, close us off for today, I, I first want to encourage you to continue your networking, and I would like to invite our IAF president, Dr. Legal, to the stage to adjourn adjourn the lunch. Okay, so once again, uh, good morning. It was uh, supposed to be a welcome, but uh, in fact, uh, as you know, there is uh, in Paris uh, both uh, the Chinese president, uh, the German chancellor, uh, the French president, uh, the head of the European Commission, and so as a total, it's a total mess in the traffic. So instead of uh, 20 minutes, I, it took me uh, almost 100 minutes to come from there. So I'm very sorry for that. But uh, I uh, wanted to uh, tell you that I am very pleased to see so many people for this uh, ID3G uh, diversity lunch. And uh, as it has been done, uh, we uh, focused on uh, geographical uh, diversity. Uh, it is clear that uh, uh, engaging emerging space countries more and more in global space activities um, will continue to be uh, a priority of uh, IIF. And uh, I am uh, very happy to see that uh, the IIF, in cooperation with the Centre Royal de Télédétection Spatiale, CRTS, in Morocco, and the CNES, we will organize the first global uh, conference on space for emerging countries, the so-called GLEC 2019, in Marrakech, Morocco, from uh, Wednesday, 24 of April, till Friday, 26th of April. Uh, this conference has already raised a significant uh, interest in our global space community. And so I would like to encourage all of you to consider participating to this unique gathering. Uh, last year, uh, IIF went to uh, Latin America, South America, and uh, now uh, we are going to Africa and to Morocco after the African chapter in uh, Nairobi, Kenya, a few months ago. So uh, once again, uh, thank you very much for uh, your interest for uh, these uh, topics. Thank you very much uh, to our speakers. Thank you very much uh, to Marie, because this point is uh, very, very important. We are going to continue to have uh, two uh, very uh, exciting days uh, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, and uh, with uh, a very big event tomorrow night for the uh, usual uh, IIF cocktail reception. And uh, of course, uh, by the end of uh, next, uh, next month, uh, the GLEC 2019 uh, 
uh, in Marrakech. So thank you very much. Bon appétit. Thank you. Thank you.